What is the frequency of workouts that you could give us kind of across the board? What's too many, what's too few? You know, you could see results training just one day a week. The goal of going into the gym to train is foremost to create a stimulus that you need to adapt to so that the muscle grows and gets stronger. There's a lot of ways to do things. My system that I've had success with is kind of like focused on gaining strength over time mm -hmm. so that you don't require so many sets. The main thing is, are you progressively overloading the muscles? Are you putting more tension on the muscles over time? Take notes, have a logbook or an app that keeps track of your progress and you have a goal in mind. Otherwise, you're just gonna be spinning your wheels. And that's how people grow. I and many other people are super interested in how they can resistance train best. Let's admit it, most people who do some resistance training probably want some hypertrophy, some muscle growth, perhaps not in their entire body, some people do, but in specific body parts. They wanna grow bigger arms, they wanna grow bigger glutes. So let's start off with the basics. What is the frequency of workouts that you could give us kind of across the board What's too many, what's too few? Yep, so I would say two times a week full body would be like the minimum. Now you could see results training just one day a week. Like if you had a coach that was that knew what they were doing, you could get good, good results just lifting weights one day a week. It would be a brutal day, but it would be full body. You'd hit mostly, you know, the big basic multi-joint movements. But if you stuck to that, you would see a lot of gains and you could keep seeing gains for you know, theoretically an entire year or two. If you wanna maximize your gains, you need to hit a muscle probably twice a week. There's some evidence that, you know, maybe three times a week is best, but that's hard to recover from. But I would say for the majority of listeners who are eager to get started, you get so much of your results from the first set. Mm -hmm. The first set you do. The first work set. After the first working set you do. Adding more volume, adding more frequency, it's not linear. So it sounds like if somebody is relatively new to resistance training, like they're in their first year of resistance training, the lower limit, given that most people don't have a coach and are probably not willing to put in the kind of intensity for an, a whole body workout to just train once per week, seems like twice per week, hitting each body part twice per week. So whole body twice per week. How many sets do you recommend per exercise after a sufficient warm up? In my online programs, I always recommend three sets. When I train people in real life, it's typically two sets. Mm -hmm. But I would say most of the world does four sets. You know, like most people just generically do four sets per exercise. It's just kind of what, and most people do bro splits. They do body part splits. Like what, what the most of the world does isn't always what's best. And I, there's nothing wrong with doing four sets. It's just that people aren't focused. They just kind of go through the motions. You'll say, you know, Hey, Andrew, what's your workout? And if you go, well, I do, you know, bench press, I do 135 for 15, and then I do 185 for 12, and then I do 205 for eight, and then 225 for five. Well, that's what you do every week. Then why would you grow? Why would you adapt? Why would you see results from that? So a lot of people just go through the motions. When you have a plan and you're utilizing progressive overload, the main thing is, are you progressively overloading the muscles are you putting more tension on the muscles over time and that's how people grow but if your program is working then you're getting stronger over time you don't need four sets to do that you need to take notes have a logbook or an app that keeps track of your progress and you have a goal in mind there's a lot of ways to do things and every coach has their own system my system that I've had success with is kind of like focused on gaining strength over time mm -hmm. so that you don't require so many sets. In fact, I would rather, I like my clients training three times per week, full body three times per week, full body three times per week, or LULUL, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower. With a rest day in between? No, Monday through Friday, lower, upper, lower, upper, take Saturday and Sunday off. Keep in mind, 70 4% of my followers are women. I'm the glute guy. So my, most of my followers are women. So they, women and men have different, they, they can train the same way for their gains. There's a lot of kind of experts coming out now saying women and men need to train totally differently. 
they don't need to train differently as per like the the, the variables and stuff. The, the thing is they have different goals. A lot of women want their glutes. They prioritize lower body more than whereas men want more upper body. So then our exercise selection is going to differ and our splits are going to differ. If we do, if we do split it up, they want typically three lower body days and two upper body days, whereas men would want probably the opposite, th three upper body days and two lower body days. Many roads can lead to Rome, but you do need to make sure that you're gaining strength over time. If you want a muscle to substantially change, but you can't have that increase, that PR can't come at the expense of decreased range of motion or sloppy form. That's probably the number one tenant of strength training is progressive overload. And the listeners need to understand that because otherwise you're just going to be spinning your wheels. Now, it's not to say you can't make gains not utilizing progressive overload. In fact, we talked about this on the, when we were working out yesterday, how to use the mind-muscle connection. But ultimately, how do you know you're placing increasing demands on the muscle over time? Your barometer should be like, you know, the loads and, and the, the sets and reps that you're doing. I just want to take a slight step back and highlight a couple of things that you said and, and maybe clarify a few of them for myself and, and for the listeners. The goal of going into the gym to train is foremost to create a stimulus that you need to adapt to so that the muscle grows and gets stronger. In theory, one could do that by training the entire body once per week, but that would be a very taxing workout, probably requires a coach to do properly. And in general, most people are probably going to benefit from training two or three times per week minimum. It does seem to be the case lately that most of the papers, as I understand, point to every muscle should be trained twice per week, perhaps not as intensely in the two wor workouts, but um, at least twice per week. And you said three times per week is probably even more beneficial. I like this lower, upper, lower upper, lower, five days per week format that you listed out. When I see that, I think training legs three times per week in the gym with weights and machines, et cetera, sounds like a lot. So my question is for the three or even the two lower body workouts that men or women are doing, are they doing the same exercises in every one of those lower body workouts for the same muscle groups? Or, and in addition to that, are they hitting quads three times a week or twice a week directly? Um, because many people can't recover or at least the soreness doesn't go away uh, in between workouts. So how are you splitting up lower body if somebody is training lower body uh, two or three times per week? Great question. So first of all, I want to mention before steroids became a thing, the bodybuilders back then, if you can look up like Steve Reeves, Reg Park, John Grimek, they did three full, I think they all did three full body workouts a week. Or they train mostly full body, but they'd hit muscles frequently. The thing is, they didn't do. Now we have so many machines. We have some. They did. They did mostly barbell training, and you know what I mean. They focused on the big basics, and they would repeat movements. The goal is gaining strength. So with every person, it's unique, and there's so many ways to do this. If I have some people deadlift hard twice a week, they might get back pain, even if they're using good form. What if they're really weak? have really weak hamstrings in isolation and I start giving them seated leg curls and it transfers to their deadlift. The seated leg curls doesn't put stress on their low back. You get stronger by identifying weak links and there's a lot of transfer between the different lifts. I don't believe you need to repeat the same movements all the time. And I also think you should switch it up every month. And that's one thing I've had a lot of success with. With my system, I've had a lot of success. We have like a, a squat and bench press month. Then the next month will be a deadlift and chin up month. What does that mean? That means that during all lower body workouts, you're doing squats and deadlifts? No, you do always do all the movement patterns. It's what you do first and what you focus on. That's what you're going for the PR on. But I'm not trying to have you get stronger at squats every single month. And if you don't like barbell squats, you can do, you know, Hack squat. Hack squat, leg press. It could be a single leg movement, but it's the movement pattern. From the side view, does it look like a squat? Mm -hmm. So that could be a squat, hack squat, lunge, belt squat, leg press, V squat. They all work very similarly. So I want you getting stronger at those, um, but not every month. So here's what I kind of realized. Have you ever focused on, you, you say you don't want, your, your chest and back, you're not trying to grow maximally. 
But if you, let's say you're just trying to get as big as humanly possible. Have you ever said, I want to see if I can work my way up to 20 chin-ups? Uh, I haven't, but um, you mean in a single set? Yeah. Um, no, I've not, I have not done that. Well, if you did do that, your back muscles would probably get bigger, right? And, sure. But you'd, you'd be like, okay, I have this chin-up goal. I want to get 20 chin-ups. How am I going to get their best? I'm going to start doing more chin-ups. Maybe you don't like chin-ups all the time, so you do heavy supinated pull-downs. I've realized they transfer. There's like a one-on-one, one-to-one correlation. I never realized that till the last couple of years. Supinated, treating it like a chin-up. Okay, so for those that don't know, supinated means palms facing you. Palms Basically, facing you. Palms facing you, pull down or on a pull down machine yep. uh, to you know chest level or something in that to the front, obviously. You can recover quickly from those. So you could do chin ups or pull downs three times a week. But what's gonna? What else will help your chin ups? Training more biceps. When I had my female clients start doing barbell curls and easy bar curls, their chin ups went up. So it has its own rules. When you focus on like the chin up month, you can hit these movements frequently, you can recover from them. But what about deadlifts? If I said you're going to focus on deadlifts this month, I don't know many lifters that can deadlift really hard twice a week. They beat you up, especially when you get strong. So you might have, you might, if you're hitting three full body workouts a week, maybe you only do heavy deadlifts once a week. But the other time you're doing a more uh, like a hingey, like a stiff leg deadlift or a good morning, real strict, not going crazy. You might leave some reps in reserve or you're just really strict so you don't get so you don't get as sore from that. And then the other day might be a ham. So you start out with a hamstring movement or something. These lifts have different rules that you figure out over time. And it also depends on the individual. Some people can squat three times a week. Some people can can't get away with that. They'll develop hip pain, knee pain, low back pain. So there's kind of this art of how to design programs that allow the masses to build strength. But whenever you work with someone individually, you have to, you stray from it a little bit. But anyway, I do believe hitting a muscle three times a week is a little bit better, but it's, it's more risky. It's, you can over, you can spin your wheels. I don't want to say overtrain because overtraining syndrome is something we all know what it means. It means stagnating because you're not properly recovered you're spinning your wheels you're not and it's really hard to recover from three times a week um, so that's why the safest bet is hit a muscle twice a week but i think if you know what you're doing you can do three times a week